Just when you thought Hyundai was out of the woods with all these engine catastrophes. Now all of a sudden this last quarter, Hyundai is on the hook for over $2 billion in repairs and compensation for some of the bad engines that have gone out to pasture. Is this latest ruling enough to flush Hyundai and Kia down the proverbial can? Not sure. Can Hyundai actually recover from this latest catastrophe? Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. Now I know I've been criticized in recent history with my conversations around Hyundai and Kia and their lackluster build quality, particularly where engines and the electrics are concerned. People have talked about the fact that they rank very highly at JD Power and Associates. and always jam the question on me, why in fact do they rank so highly in customer satisfaction and overall reliability if what I'm saying is true and that the engines are a flop? Well, there's a lot to this storyline. Now, unfortunately, the latest is 1.7 million cars are truly affected. It's the GDI Theta engines that Kia and Hyundai have been putting out for the last little while. As a matter of fact, sadly, it's not just the older cars. What we're finding is cars produced up to and including 2020 that were included in this class action lawsuit now may be on the receiving end. The worst part is Hyundai's in a place where they're now having to scale back a lot of their profits from Q3 and have to earmark that to provide this compensation and payback to the unfortunate consumers of these oil swilling engines called the GDI Theta units. Now a lot of consumers often argue and have been sucked in by the fact that Hyundai and Kia have offered up these long extended lifetime type warranties on their engine and drivetrain. But the worst part is historically people only keep their cars on average about 12 years. But because of what's been going on in the last year and the shortages that we're finding in supply chain, the shortages in the availability of brand new vehicles, people have been paying for maintenance, keeping the cars on the road a little bit longer. And the statistics are starting to show that cars are on the road for almost a year longer than they historically have been in the past. Some people are going to argue and just say, well, that's because they're better built they're lasting longer that's not entirely true a lot of it just comes down to availability or lack thereof so they're putting money in to upgrade brakes the rebuild the front end suspensions and doing all those parts just to keep the car on the road now rumor has it there's people commenting from the korean manufacturers saying well why aren't people just going out there and buying a new car that's part of the problem and why we're having to replace all these engines what a goofy situation is that they're saying that we're going to warranty your engines for lifetime and yet on the other hand they're saying get rid of it quick because because we don't want to challenge that notion that we might have to be taken up on that idea of replacing an engine within a regular lifetime. Now the real unfortunate part is that this is saddled on the back of all the issues that they were seeing with rod bearing issues and filings in the oiling systems creating hot spots and of course rod bearings failing and creating engines that were catastrophically blowing apart roadside. There's been many stories of people getting fatally injured or just being put out by the mere inconvenience of having to get their engine replaced once, sometimes twice or even more. There's also been a lot of electrical related issues as well on some of the braking systems, trailer hitches and so on. So then you have to ask yourself why are people still buying these cars? People that are saying if it's such a reliability issue and there's so many problems then why are people not get catching on to this and not actually avoiding the brand altogether? Well part of it is look at this beautiful new Hyundai here. We're talking about the Tucson. That is a gorgeous looking unit. They've come leaps and bounds ahead of many other competitors. Think about what Toyota's putting out these days. Looks very blah. But look at this. I mean this is a gorgeous looking redesign i mean look at the front end of this thing we have some great illumination on the front of course a big bold grill on this hyundai some amazing styling accents quite frankly i love that look how they kind of carve that out and it gives it a very three-dimensional look right there with this design how it slots nicely into the side panels of this vehicle of course you've got amazing looking tail lights on there and a beautiful light bar across the back now of course you've got a rear splitter that looks very interesting here beautiful wheels, all kinds of other great little accents like this right here. And of course, another nice, very low profile roof rack on top. How about these mirrors right here? Beautiful. Uh, and the interior? I would say it's just about better than anything in its class at this point in time. It almost matches those of the lower level luxury vehicle brands. So I absolutely understand why in fact people are attracted to this brand. Their styling is far more innovative than a lot of the Japanese brands. The German brands can't even come close to matching this. And everybody knows if you buy a BMW, Audi or Benz, you're going to be faced with massive expensive repair bills after three or four years. So there's no win there. Even Volkswagen has a lot of oil burning issues too to contend with and they're dealing with their own, but that's another day. And then there's many people that say, well, it's only a US Canada issue and that a lot of the Hyundais that are making it across overseas 
are in a lot better shape and have far fewer issues. Whether that's entirely true or not, the sad reality is they're faced with huge bills and because cars as recent as 2020 have similar engine issues, they could potentially be facing serious issues financially for the next five or six years, even if they straighten out those issues today. So realistically, we can make excuses all we want till the cows come home, but at the end of the day, if they focused as half as much energy on the quality and integrity of the engines and the drivetrains as they do on the new innovative styling, they would definitely be in a winning proposition. So realistically, instead of making excuses, let's just build a better engine. And with all of that said, right there, check it out. You're going to love it. That's the history on what has become from Hyundai in the beginning and where they're at today. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. See you real soon. Bye-bye.